are going to be looking at all kinds of monitors today and they have quite a few different species here at Reptilandias. Look at this beautiful animal. And guys, look at where we are. We're actually on the second floor. Do you think this is overkill? I do not. What's up back here at Reptilandia with Ryu and we're going to we're going to try and get hands on with this young Parente monitor here, which you don't see a lot of in the United States. I don't know, Ryu, you think you're feeling lucky or what? No, I'll get All right, you're gonna become part of the exhibit here. We are gonna show you some really cool monitor species today. Here we go, look at this, it's a juvenile Parente. This is amazing. You can stay right in here if you yeah, don't mind because the sure. lighting is so much better. Yeah, it is. That is awesome. Oh my God, such a spindly animal, huh? Yeah, he's so squirmy. Yeah, now he you- chills after a while. Does he? Okay, you yeah. have a bit of a relationship with him. That's what Quetzal yeah. is telling me. Yeah. So um, how long have you had have been working with this animal? This animal? Uh, I'd say, oh, thanks for that. Yeah. You, I'd say um, about maybe since September, okay. October-ish. Okay, and, and how old, do we know how old this animal is? Uh, he's not even a year old yet. Wow, it's yeah. growing fast. Yeah, he is. So when you guys got him in September or whenever you've been working on, how much has he grown since then? A lot, actually. A lot, okay. Yeah, he was teeny tiny. Okay, we saw you in another video working with the Komodo dragon. Yeah. Uh, you seem to be good with monitors and larger monitors. This is, of course, one of the largest monitor, the largest monitor in Australia. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is really cool to see. I, um, go, buddy. Man, there he goes. He's going to start calming down right now. Mm -hmm. I like that kind of articulating lines under his neck. Oh, they're beautiful. Yeah, that's it's what It's like we're, water. Yeah, it's amazing, right? Yeah. They really have this awesome... <laughs> He's so grouchy. You're so grouchy. So, just some of the things I notice about uh, this monitor, and actually Argus monitors also, is really long neck on the parenti. It's so bird-like to me. Yeah, they yeah. are. Um, these guys live in arid environments. Yeah. Um, and they are very active when looking for their prey. Their, oh, yeah. Their true monitor. They, yeah. They are out there looking around. What are some of the things you've been doing uh, to kind of encourage that kind of behavior in this enclosure? Well, sometimes like we'll hide little uh, pieces of quail and stuff awesome. around, or uh, obviously he loves to chase the roaches and stuff. I've seen him climb the wall. Wow, that, that, yeah, that's yeah. pretty good. Like he's <laughs> able to climb that. Yeah. Uh, that's really cool. Um, this is an awesome beginning. Like I said, we are going to be looking at all kinds of monitors today, and they have quite a few different species here at Reptilandia, so I'm pretty excited because you guys know I love monitors. Um, Parenti would be a dream monitor of mine. You want uh, to touch him? Oh, sure. That would be amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. He's just going to be reach right. Oh, my God. He's beautiful. Yeah. He's beautiful. But he's not bitey. He hasn't bitten you. That's awesome. You're just kind of uh, yeah. not restraining the neck. Uh, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you. And this is really what's cool about the monitors is you can socialize them. Yeah. So it makes things easier for when this is a seven foot long lizard. Right, yeah. exactly. So that is incredible. Yeah. But very athletic build also. Yes. Um, le very, le what I would say, uh, lith, I guess would be the term. Yeah. Um, very, like, a good runner. Yeah, yeah absolutely. One of the fastest monitors out there. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, you know what? Let's get this journey going. We're going to uh, meet up with Quetzal right now, and we're going to take a look at some other monitor species. What's his name? Ozzy. Later, Ozzy. Aw, <laughs> oh, there's nothing better than hanging out in the canopy with croc monitors. Look at this place, man. This is amazing. Uh, there is a croc monitor way over there. There's the big male, okay? And the female's just behind him. And this has become my favorite exhibit at Reptilandia. Look at this place. Um, Quetzal, you've ruined it for me. I thought my croc monitor enclosure was cool, but it ain't Reptilandia cool. I need well, to get myself together. August, so you got a couple of months to I got a couple of months to impress you. I think we need to make an even bigger croc monitor enclosure because seeing them this high, okay, and thank you, Ryu, for the, uh, for the unfettered access, but look at this, guys. This is what I want to do for my croc monitors. I want them to be able to be real high up in the air, to enjoy themselves. I think we can do something better at Camp Kennan. I've been inspired here. Uh, like I said, this video is all about monitors, so I just wanted to show the crops. No, let's let's go see something else here. The best, the best compliment you can give us that is inspirational. 
That's awesome, man. Yeah. So we're focusing on the monitors here. Uh, you guys know I love monitors. They're a highly intelligent lizard. And uh, we're about to take a look at a species that is pretty impressive. I, that I have really no, um, no kind of idea about. We're going to look at the McCrea. Okay. This is McCrea. What's their common name? Uh, blue tree monitor. Oh, wow. Oh, this one is. Right, let's see. He's right there on the branch. Oh, look at this blue tree monitor. Look at, and guys, look at where we are. We're actually on the second floor. Do you think this is overkill? I do not. This lizard, this is how big he is. Let me just see if I can move this. Look at this lizard, guys. Look at this beautiful animal. So I'm actually able to film a blue tree monitor way up in the trees, okay? So, again, look at how much canopy or how much elevation is here. Uh, would you say that's about 20 foot down from where we are? Um, Maybe. Yeah, 20 feet. 20 yeah, feet. And, and what type of cohabitation is this animal living with uh, now? We have a New Guinea blue tongue skink, Talicogagus. Oh, uh, they're way skink. down there. Yeah, you guys can see it down way down there. There he is. He's just kind of hanging out way down there. Okay, but way up here is the blue tree monitor. So, Quetzal, talk to me about this species. What is it about this species you love so much? I'm going to just try and pull this back so we can see. Yeah, okay, I can help you with that. All right, thank you. Well, this is, uh, this is undoubtedly one of the most gorgeous lizards on the planet. Um, these are fairly recently described. Uh, they became known to science in the 90s, if I'm not wrong. Um, they live on a few islands off of uh, the uh, northwest coast of, uh, of New Guinea. Um, <clears throat> there's been a lot of breakthroughs in captivity recently with tree monitors and people are uh, really treating them how they ought to be treated. There's a lot of captive success and a lot of interest with um, you know, the blues and the blacks and the yellows now. So people have figured out that you really shouldn't feed them mice. It's too rich a diet for them. Okay. And, uh, what are you feeding them then? You can feed them a lot of roaches and chicks. Okay. Because you know that's, that's, more, that's closer to what their natural diet would be. That's incredible. Uh, do you know Brett Baldwin from the San Diego? Oh yeah, yeah, great guy. Yeah, Brett, Brett. Brett's a great guy, yeah. And he had some great luck breeding on, I don't know if it was green trees. He was doing some work with them. They they were nesting, like he had built yeah, these nest those. boxes, they're, yeah. Yeah, they're big, uh, big nests that are, I believe that they're about four feet tall. Right. They fill them with, there's a birdhouse at the top. Exactly. And then they, uh, yeah, they, they fill they the bottom up. with with peat and right. uh, all that stuff, soil. Yeah, and that's, uh, this is so cool. I mean, you can do something. You can actually make something in here. I mean, all these trees yeah, that were created. I mean, the idea is, you know, we were going to do a nesting box. Right here so you can access it. it. Yeah. yeah, smart. Hang it here so you can pop off the top. Um, awesome. My idea was to do a PVC. Okay. I just drill that. And that would make sense. And you could drain it. And that's there's, awesome. there's a lot of ways to do it. Awesome, man. Well, that's a beautiful animal. Yeah, I love is. this enclosure. Um, so vertical space, more important than horizontal space for oh, these absolutely. guys. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. And, and it's working, man. Yeah. Look where he is. He's way up high. And the great thing about Reptilandia is you can view it. You can see these animals from this vantage point. And if you go down, you'll see the animals on the forest floor. So you've really created the different uh, microclimates, yeah, the, the stratospherical uh, habitat. All right, so that was uh, monitor number three. There's still more to see here, man. There's a lot of monitors floating around. Having so much fun here. Okay. The lovely, the most uncommon species of monitor that we have. I'm psyched to see this. He's been hanging out here all day. Yeah, this is a Spencer's monitor. Okay. These, uh, believe it or not, were one of the first monitor species ever bred in captivity in the 60s. They in, were? Yeah, in Australia, I believe. I remember reading. Um, this is a monitor from uh, Black Soil Plains in Australia, and they live in a really interesting area um, that can, where, the, where there's a type of grass that can withstand uh, something like five years drought. Really? If they can't, uh, but after five years of drought, you know, then the habitat really falls down. But um, if the drought is less than five years, from according to what I've told from Australian field biologists, 
uh, then the habitat will recover. So their, their ecology is really interesting. So when it rains, uh, there's an explosion of frogs. And so uh, they, they lay up for about half of the year, but when, when the first rains, supposedly for the first uh, two weeks of the rains, there's an explosion of frogs and then they eat, uh, they stuff themselves with frogs. Huh. And uh, then after that, the frogs disappear, and then it takes about a month or so for the, the grass, the grasses to bear seed, and then there's an explosion of mice. And then they eat uh, mice for um, another part of the year. Yeah, for another part of the year, for several more months. And then when it dries up again, they uh, they hide, they lay up for the rest of the year. Um, so they go into some kind of not necessarily a brumation. Uh, they but, go yeah, to a state uh, of dormancy, yeah, dormancy less activity. activity. And these, according to uh, my Australian colleagues, um, they've actually benefited from humanity to an extent. Really, they apparently love to nest under highways. Really, that makes a good uh, <clears throat> that makes a good uh, nesting sites for them. These have large clutches of eggs, um, and uh, these are one of two monitors that I'm familiar with that have baggy loose skin on their face. Yeah. Oh no, no, on oh. their bodies. Oh yeah, I see. Okay. And in the case, in their case, it's easier to figure out because they they stuff themselves for uh, a certain time of year, and they have tremendous clutches. Uh, the second species of monitor that I'm familiar with well, is Varana spinulosis that has baggy skin. Wow. And that's a little more, the reason for its morphology is a little more up in the air. Gotcha. We have those downstairs and we're going to head downstairs and check those out. All right, right let's now. do it, man. All right, folks. Okay. Who do we got here? Okay, this is Varana spinulosis, the spiny monitor from the Solomon Islands. Wow, look at the big eyes, man. This is a species that's uh, really dear to my heart because I got to uh, um, I got to uh, field collect these in the Solomon Islands wild several years ago when there was some uh, some concern that they were uh, some concern about their state. But uh, these, like I was saying before, with the with the um, with the uh, the Spencer's monitor, this is another monitor that has loose and baggy skin. Okay. Okay. Uh, the reason why I think these have loose and baggy skin is because these like it really, really hot. Um, when I saw these in the Solomon Islands, they were uh, they were active in the heat of the day. You're, you're really? Copper, um, your copper gears are made. Cool, uh, thanks. Have you seen that? <laughs> yeah. uh, that's uh, that's nice. People stop by to let them know when the snakes are doing their thing. Awesome. Yeah, man. so in the heat of the day is when they're active and you know, they're, they're sympatric with mangrove monitors in the Solomons, and I think that might be how they uh, share space because the mangroves in the Solomons are more morning and evening. Okay. These really like the heat of the day. And I think the reason for their baggy skin is so they can increase the surface area to heat up because they really, really like it hot. So they'll um, puff up? Or yeah, they'll flatten out. So oh, the I see. Area. Okay, okay. Um, and these in the Solomon Islands, I found these. Uh, to be more common in uh, disturbed areas. Really? Coconut plantations. When I got over there, you know, after spending thousands of dollars and many boats and many planes to get to their habitat, um, their island, uh, their islands, St. George and Isabel, were both infested with cane toads. So you know, my heart sunk. I was thinking to myself, don't tell me that they're extinct now because these weren't pretty much unknown at the time aside from the holotype and some that have come into the uh, pet trade in the 90s. Um, but it turns out that these guys do not uh, do not eat cane toads. Really? And I got permits to bring 10 of them back to my facility in Costa Rica and in, in a rather bold, if I don't mind saying so, set of experiments. You know, I, I wanted to see if they would eat the cane toads and the cane toads didn't phase them or they would ignore them. But they would not eat the cane toads. Oh, that's amazing. Their specialization seems to be their salvation. Uh, in the Solomon Islands because the Indicus, by all accounts, Indicus population, that's the mangrove monitor, uh, have dropped dramatically all of the Solomon Islands from eating cane toads. Yeah. That's another these, cool species. These are, what, one of the interesting things about these is these seem to have a little piece of everything in them. You know, there's like, you can see Rudicollis, you can, roughneck monitors, you yeah. can see Salvadora, yeah. you can see Bengal, you can see Indicus. Yeah, really, that's true. Really neat animal. Very cool. And, and if you look closely, if you look closely, something interesting about those is you can notice that the front claws are uh, are longer than the rear claws, um, which is similar to certain uh, 
Latin American amoeba lizards. Okay. Which, uh, you know, I think is designed for rooting around. And, you know, when I had these in Costa Rica, I used to give them balsa logs, uh, which had roaches living in them. And they would rip the logs apart Makes and sense. catch the roaches, which was... You know, and I've also seen words. tree monitors oh, put yeah. their claws in and pull things out of like... I'm glad you brought that up okay. because when that, when that first came to light, when that tree monitor experiment first came to light, a buddy of mine asked me to do that um, with these. And so okay. I drilled a hole in a, uh, in a piece of wood and I put a pinky inside and they not only reached in and grabbed it, they took the tree monitor thing a step further. They would straighten out their claws and stab no way. the pinkies in and then pull them out and eat them. There you go. Yeah, which was really interesting. That is awesome behavior. Very cool, man. All right, who's our next monitor friend? Our next monitor, let's see. Let's go deal with the Lacy's. Ah, uh, Lacy's. Okay, he's, oh, and the Lacy's are getting romantic. Too. Oh boy, I don't want to disturb no, them. No, no, it doesn't matter. Because, you know, if you ever get babies of this, we should yeah, talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that smile. <laughs> yeah. okay. you, you got plenty of stuff I want to. Uh, there you go. Know. There you go. We'll, we'll figure it out. Oh, All right. This, this is guys. our this is our pair of lace monitors. And this these are the bell's face. Bell's face. Arguably some of the most beautiful monitor lizards in the world. I would say definitely. Um, this is another species like the Salvadori, and the female appears to be the boss. I mean, even though she's so much smaller than she is. Oh, and he is. Um, it's everything. The decisions are up to her. Um, the way the cage is set up is uh, you can go up a little. Look at that. Is there's a lot of areas that uh, are a lot easier for her to get to than for him. Okay, that um, makes sense. Yeah, so she's uh, she wants to, to get away from him. And then this is your nesting yes. box? And this is our nesting box, and I have to thank uh, my friend Brian Waterloo um, for this design because you know it has to be for breeding uh, lace monitors. Um, he said that exactly, he recommended that the nest box had to be 85 degrees, which it is, um, make a hole in the top, and it has to be packed um, with, uh, with what was it called? Why am I drawing a blank? Paralyte? There's, it's, it's like a coconut fiber. Oh, okay. It's what they really like because in the wild these are, are termite, uh, Oh, termite my nest and termite mounts. Yeah. You know, I never did nest box like that. I think I'm going to start doing yeah, that. I, I always wanted to, you know, I always, I always put it on the side. side. I always did it on the side but too. But you know what? Yeah, but the, the soil, yeah. you can't fill it up the right way. Exactly. This is awesome. Yeah, and it was, you know, Brian, Brian's the one who deserves credit for that. Because that. he said they like to, unlike a lot of monitors, when they lay, it's kind of like a standing up position. Okay. That they lay in, which I had no idea. And look at this. He's, he's uh, definitely interested, man. This is great. So, so, so guys, we're going to keep our fingers crossed that they're viable eggs. And then I'll trade half of my, I'll trade half of my collection for a couple bait. Okay, I know kidding. viewers, viewers, you heard that. I got, I got all the viewers. I hope he gets a million viewers. Oh my oh, God. God. Look at how beautiful they are though. That is, that is, um, it's just one of those bucket list monitors yeah, for me. Gorgeous, gorgeous they're a great animal. Um, and the cool thing, you know, lace monitors, I know that the normal um, phase, they can take cooler temperatures. They, oh, they, yeah, these they, guys can take very cool temperatures. They can, well. yeah, that, that's always less stressful for me being yeah, in Florida. Same, same here. You know, I just want them here. to be happy. That's awesome, man. Okay. Well, we're definitely checking out a lot of monitors here today. Um, it's funny, he's got to think. This, this facility is so large. It's racking his brain. Yeah. Right, where is the next monitor species? I mean, I know we got the Komodo dragon. Yeah, okay, we got the Komodo, we got the Parenti, the Lace, the Spencers, the Becari. Yep. Um, in the private area, we have a, a baby Dumerals and some more Spinulosis. Let's go check out some yeah, babies, we'll man. Out some baby monitors. Hey. We're going to head over there right yes. now. Now here's a species of monitor. We were just walking by and we thought we'd stop and show you. Um, I actually used to have this species. Um, Marty was his name. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure he got himself a cane toad and that's what did him in because he did escape and I found him deceased quite so long. It was such a bummer because these are really cool, man. And here's a large male Merton's monitor. That's a good sized male. Um, and this is a species of water monitor from Australia. And one of the things I noticed, here's a water monitor, there's one right there. Yeah, it's, uh, that's the female. That's the female? Yeah. 
That's awesome, man. So she's just doing her thing looking for a way out. Uh, again, you notice something, guys, about these enclosures? Large enclosures for large and active lizards. And then plenty of fantastic water. Uh, and it looks just like a mangrove, you know? Like, there she is, just kind of hanging out in that mangrove area. Um, love this. That is so incredible. It's such a bummer. Oh, he's mo he's on the move now. Let's go. Come on over here, buddy. I'm not afraid. Let's go. Look at this. That, that's another cool sign. Um, it, when they're curious and they're not afraid of people, this shows that these animals are nicely socialized. And when that tongue flicks like that a lot, that is a sign that the animal's curious because that tongue is giving him a lot of information. And so that just means, hey man, is there any food in here? And you know, these enclosures are so well designed for these animals. Look what he's doing, he's probing through the river rock. That's exactly what those animals would be doing in the wild. And that's not only physically stimulating, but mentally stimulating yeah. for the animal. Uh, but that's a beautiful lizard, my gosh. I love Mertens. And they don't get much larger than that, do they? No, no, that's just big as Yeah, that's, that's really cool. Oh, who is this? An Australian water dragon yeah. wants in on the action. That's, so, that's another thing, to have multi-species exhibits like this, and you're not having any issues because the water dragons are of a size that they'd just be too much work for these mertens to really uh, mess with. So they kind of ignore them and wait for an easier meal. So cool to see this thing moving around. And there's a little display of his hemi penis with the little defecation. <laughs> yep, there you go. All right, see you later, bud. That's awesome. That's so cool. Yeah, that was good footage. <laughs> that was really cool. Thanks. All right, we're going to finish this up in an area that is off exhibit. See you there. Uh, we are. Some more spinulosis. Okay. Yeah, these are really cool, man. These, these are oops, smaller, but these are just these some are grow outs right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then these. this is another spinulosis. Yeah, this is another spinulosis. Yeah, you need to meet. You're going to meet when you come to Florida, my buddy Jerry Wolf. He's a monitor guy, okay. and he'll love to meet with you. He's got some really cool enclosures, okay, uh, cool. but he had some roughnecks that did well. And yeah, these, I like well, roughnecks. Yeah, the, the, you know what? You, it is true when you say that there is a mix of all the different Yeah, there's, there's a little piece of everything in yeah, them. Yeah, I think the, the eyes and a little bit of the face look like a roughneck. Yeah, right? I agree. And then the back, uh, the ocelli there are like a croc monitor. Um, and then and the, the yeah. body is like a bengal. Okay, I've never seen a bengal, so I couldn't comment on that. But what what do you think is like the indicus, the uh, mangrove monitor? Um, well, you can't really. A newborn baby spinulosis is interesting um, because it's like you know when you look at these, these were described originally by Robert Mertens as okay. a subspecies of indicus, and when you look at this. Hmm. I mean, a two-year-old can tell you that this looks nothing like nothing. an indicus, and you know, for Robert Mertens to make a mistake like that, you know, that didn't add up for, okay. for me. But you know, when I when I bred these in CR, a newborn baby, which is what he used to describe, which was the holotype, uh -huh. they do look a lot like they have a very indicus-ish face. Okay, but they change. Yeah. was you know, when we were growing up, uh, Quetzal, all the literature would say that. The baby reptile is an exact replica yeah. of oh, no. its adult. And that is so yeah, not that's true. Absurd. It is the dumbest thing. It is not. You know, there, there are juvenile characteristics right, exactly. that even, you know, make them look cute. Like a baby right. alligator. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's got the big bulbous yeah, eyes and the short snout and they're yeah, cute. The morphology is different. Yeah, it's just so funny that that would be uh, in the literature and, and re reproduced time and time again because it's not true. Yeah, but I mean, then that's just calls. Cool. That's why... That's why you know it's valuable to work with live specimens mm. and observe live specimens and yep. have a a, a a sizable series. Gotcha. You know to draw any conclusions. All right, who's the final monitor we're going to look at here today? This is, this is we have a Nile monitor. Oh, here. I this is an underrated lizard. The Nile monitor. We have them feral in Florida. Yeah, that's what I was. Saying. Um, I can no longer keep this species, so there is a Nile hanging out. Yeah, we're going right to we're going to grow this up and. Uh, Hopefully it'll work out in one of the West African exhibits. That would be cool. I saw in the Bronx Zoo, you might have seen this, there's an awesome Nile monitor exhibit. Have you seen it? I haven't seen it. I haven't been to the Bronx Zoo in a few years now. It's because been a while. It, it's not in the reptile house. They have an Africa exhibit. Uh, okay. But they did a really beautiful job. They did a good job. Yeah, kids. I think it was Kevin's project. Kevin Tardagrosa? Yeah, Kevin Tardagrosa. Yeah, he did a nice, nice job there. And 
There's a really nice Nile Nile monitor exhibit, and there's a Colorado Python exhibit. That's nah, cool. I gotta get back up there, man. Um, I'll tell you what, friends. Speaking of nice jobs, Reptilandia Quetzal, you've done a nice job here. This is really cool. And you know, we're finishing out a series of videos from here. Uh, do me a favor, guys. Head on over to his Facebook page, Reptilandia. Uh, head on over. Uh, give it a like. Let him know you saw the videos. Um, and if you get the chance to come down to Hill Country here, just north of San Antonio. Uh, go to Johnson City, Reptilandia is here. You will not be disappointed. I had the best time highlighting his place. The great part about Quetzal is he is so knowledgeable. That's what real, I learned a lot. And if I'm learning a lot, I know you guys are learning a lot. And that's why we're here on this channel. Thanks, brother. Appreciate okay, thank it. Thank you so he's much. A, You're welcome a, anytime. Oh, that's the best compliment I could ever get. He wants me back. Well, yeah. we're going to have him out to Camp yeah, Kennedy. Yeah, be in Florida, so. So it'll be fun. I can't wait to see what he thinks of the place and get some more ideas. See you all very soon. Take care. Thank you. Cool.